Home Alone. Yes, I know it's April, and I'm referencing a holiday movie from the early 90s. There's a stubborn toss-up in our house. Which one was the best, Home Alone 1 or Home Alone 2? But mercy goodness did the series take a nosedive after the second one. But that's beside the point. Regardless which one you pick, the theme is pretty simple. A kid, Macaulay Culkin, is on his own as two characters played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern lose sight of their original intent of looting either the kid's house in Chicago or a toy store in New York, depending on which one you're watching. I would be incredibly surprised if you've never seen either one of these films, but I'm not one to assume. In short, the bad guys want something to rob the place and the kid foils their every attempt. But not wanting the kid to have the upper hand, the burglars become more and more angry with each setback, thereby becoming more and more aggressive in their actions. That was a really important sentence right there. Anger, aggression. Anger led to aggression. The bad guys got upset, which is the emotion, then proceeded to take it out on the kid, which is the action of aggression. But the really important takeaway here is not to forget your kids at home as you go on vacation and thereby burglars wanting to hit the house, but is that there is a big difference between being angry and being aggressive. I want to say that one more time. There's a big difference between being angry and being aggressive. At some point in your life, you've been angry. I've been angry. Someone you know and love has been angry. Anger is an emotion, just as much as calm is an emotion, or being excited, or being nostalgic. These are emotions, just as anger is as well. An emotion is defined as a strong feeling deriving from one's circumstances. So why is anger looked at with such disdain? What is it about, oh, I wish I could keep my cool like so-and-so does, or why am I so angry all the time? That's another way of saying why am I so emotional all the time. But maybe, just maybe, it's not getting angry that we should be getting so worked up about. Let's open this box a little more as we shed some light on what's stirring beneath the surface. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. If only they would have left the kid alone. They could have moved on to knocking off the other houses in the neighborhood and been just fine. They could have avoided all of the trouble and would have never been arrested after all said and done in both films. But once again, emotions beat logic. Though it doesn't have to be that way. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening, learning what to do when things come up. So what do you do when you're just about to lose it? Well, first... What happened? Take a moment to ask yourself what caused the upset. A nasty bill in the mail, or a colleague giving negative feedback during a Zoom meeting. Maybe the kid's not listening for the billionth time this morning. Or maybe, just maybe, I don't know, a pandemic has messed everyone up completely for the last year. It's okay if you find yourself short-fused, particularly this year. Each day is a lovely box of opportunities, but if you're finding yourself feeling angry, look to see if it's part of a pattern or a routine that's being the catalyst. Are you going into everyday occurrences, expecting them to be different each time, only to become more annoyed when they're not the outcome you had hoped for again and again? Oh, I hate this commute. I can't believe it takes me this long to get to work each day. Or maybe, speaking from experience, your oldest says each morning, oh, Do I have to have eggs again for breakfast? 
What is the agitator behind your emotion? Don't be upset for feeling upset. It's a part of life. It's normal. It is an emotion. There's nothing wrong with emotions. But at least understanding the reasoning behind this emotion, the reasoning behind being upset, and seeing if there's a solution, a workaround, or a problem solve. You know, this commute is my least favorite part of the day. But I'm going to find ways of taking my mind off the time I feel like I'm wasting as I'm stuck in traffic. Recognizing the commute irritates you is a tremendous step already. But now adding something you enjoy to the routine, such as changing the route, or listening to an audiobook, or finding a new podcast to listen to, after listening to this one, of course. Our oldest son is finicky about eggs. So, after growing rather tired of the conversation back and forth, my wife now makes a giant batch of oatmeal at the start of each week. It's a win-win, as it's one less thing for her to make each morning, and our son loves oatmeal, as long as there's plenty of cinnamon and raisins mixed in. But rather than getting more and more irritated, with reckless drivers or finicky eaters wrecking your day before it's even started, ask yourself, what is it that's leading to my feeling angry? Come to find, in most cases, there's a workaround if you look deep enough. Your boss hardly noticing you during the morning calls with the team each day makes you feel insignificant and looked over as your colleagues garnish praise after praise. No wonder you're upset. But rather than it continuing to stir a cauldron of bitterness, call or message he or she directly, asking if there's something more you can be doing or go a step further and create something to present without being asked. What sets the emotional alarm and how can you logically extinguish it? Now, going back to our home alone scenario, the story isn't centered around the burglars being angry, but the story, the plot, is in their aggressive response to being angry, the actions they took in getting more and more angry. Like I said earlier, Anger is an emotion just like any other emotion. And while you can't predict or control an emotion, you can determine the aftermath of that emotion. The reason why some tend to keep a cool head rather than throwing a wine glass or punching a hole in the wall isn't because they're just a better person, but they've learned to manage their emotions better. And that begins with breaking down the what ignites the flame, then the how can I prevent the flame from turning it into a fire? Making a habit to notate either in your phone or on paper the catalyst in becoming angry and what the onset of what that is will curtail these emotional responses. A simple thesaurus search will show you how angry can even come in various packages, being offended or frustrated or even embarrassed. But becoming aware of what happened to make you feel this way will give you insight into how it happens and then what to do when it happens. Emotions aren't bad. Being happy, sad, relaxed, these are feelings we experience every day. But having the ability to respond to these emotions allows you to create healthy habits not only recognize when something goes amiss, but to take the steps in working through them as well. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. 
This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this in future podcasts and aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CometDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.